After the Battle of Stirling Bridge, from November 1297 until January 1298, Sir William Wallace led a Scottish army south. Sir Wallace was a Scottish knight who became one of the main leaders during the First War of Scottish Independence. He marched south into England with great confidence as he had beaten the English before. From Newcastle upon Tyne to Carlisle, the Scots raided the countryside, bringing back the spoils. Eventually, news got to King Edward regarding the defeat of his northern army at the Battle of Stirling Bridge. Edward returned to England on the 14th of March 1298 to continue organizing of an army for his second invasion of Scotland which had been in preparation since late 1297. As a preliminary step he moved the center of government to York, where it was to remain for the next six years. A council of war was held in the city in April to finalize the details of the invasion. The Scottish magnates were all summoned to attend, and when none appeared they were all declared to be traitors. Edward then ordered his army to assemble at Roxburgh on the 25th of June. The force counted 2,000 armored cavalry and about 12,000 infantry. Stuart Reed estimates Edward's force at 214 knights with 900 troopers, 1,000 cavalry supplied by the earls, 500 mercenary crossbowmen, 2,000 archers with billmen from the Lancashire and Cheshire feudal levies, and 10,500 Welshmen. Edward left Roxburgh on the 3rd of July and reached Kirkliston in two weeks, where he awaited supplies expected to arrive along the coastal ports, delayed due to weather. Finally, on the 20th of July, Edward advanced, reaching Linlithgow on the 21st of July. Edward was on the point of falling back on Edinburgh. When he received intelligence the Scots were at Torwood, near Falkirk, ready to harass his retreat. Edward reportedly said that he would not trouble them to seek me, and placed his army south of Falkirk on the morning of the 22nd. Edward wanted to make camp and feed his men while waiting for his infantry to catch up with his cavalry. His cavalry commanders though, favored an immediate attack. The Scots army, again made up chiefly of spearmen as at Stirling Bridge, was arranged in four great hedgehogs known as Shiltrons. The long spears pointing outwards at various heights gave these formations a formidable and impenetrable appearance. The gaps between the Shiltrons were filled with archers, with 500 mounted knights at the rear. On Tuesday the 22nd of July, the English cavalry advanced. The vanguard, led by the Earl of Lincoln, moved to the left to avoid a marshy area, followed by John de Warren, 6th Earl of Surrey.
The English charged the Scots and Lincoln quickly routed the Scottish capital. The Scots bowmen commanded by Sir John Stuart, the younger brother of the High Steward of Scotland, stood their ground but were overrun by the English cavalry. However, the Shiltrons held firm, with the knights making little impression on the dense forest of long spears, and 111 horses were killed in the vain attempts. Edward's cavalry fell back as his infantry and archers arrived. Edward's archers, crossbowmen and slingers began raining projectiles on the inexperienced and poorly armored Scottish spearmen. The Shiltrons were an easy target, they had no defense and nowhere to hide, penned in place by the English cavalry and infantry. In addition to this, most of the Scottish archers and cavalry had been taken out by this point, so they had no way of firing back at the English. Unable to retreat or attack, the battle was lost for the Scots almost as soon as the first arrows began to fall. The English waited, this time observing the king's command, until the Scottish ranks were thinned out and disordered enough to allow them to break up the Shiltrons. The English cavalry and infantry then attacked the wavering Scottish spearmen. The Scottish eventually scattered from the intense pressure from the English. 